Up and down the country, there are empty properties just waiting to be brought back to life. I'll be finding out why and what you can do to rescue a home for yourself. We'll be following the empty property officers whose job it is to track down the owners of forgotten houses and get them back into use. And I'll be doing some digging of my own to find out more about our housing stock, our history and why we should be both preserving and reinventing Britain's empty homes. Renovating an empty home can be a life-changing experience. It'll push you to your limits and can be a major logistical challenge, but the benefits can be truly rewarding. You get to breathe new life back into a property and tailor it to your tastes. On today's show, a couple who've taken an ambitious step up the property ladder by purchasing an abandoned chapel they plan to turn into a home for their young family. Mike's very ambitious and he's a dreamer, but I have to rein him in a little bit. A project in Chichester dedicated to regenerating a former hospital site and creating a new community hub. We've got ultimately uh, buildings that are going to be for community uses. So there's a community hall, um, there's uh, the uh, listed uh, chapel. So uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot here. And one of Britain's empty property officers who's on a mission to bring an abandoned period building in Kent back into use. That's an original feature, isn't it? It is, yeah. This actually was the main staircase of the hotel. And you can see the two big arch windows here. Mike and Angela Shepherd were in the market for a home for them and their two children that was close to their extended family where they'd grown up in Lincoln. We just came across this property. We just had a look to see what we could get for our money in Lincoln. And we just instantly fell in love with it, didn't we? Yeah, we, we drove up, well, I drove up here in the snow, in this really big snow drift, just because it was like, right, let's go and see this house. Very uh, on an impulse, but good. It felt, it felt right. With total faith in the project, Mike and Angela paid £280,000 for two adjoining buildings, a disused Baptist chapel and the attached four-bedroom Victorian house. I restore historic buildings for a living, um, stone masonry and, and that sort of work. Um, so this type of project didn't phase us at all. We knew that we wanted to take a renovation project on in the long term. Mike's very ambitious and has uh, a lot of dreams. He's a dreamer, but there are going to be certain things where I'm going to have to say, look, you know, this needs doing first and just you need to prioritise a bit, don't you? Angela may take a more practical approach whilst Mike dreams big, but they're both focused on one goal, to turn these abandoned buildings into a sizeable home for their family. My dream for the children was to have a nice garden and just be able to let them be free and obviously be close to the family. I want the kids to get to know their cousins and things, so it's ideal, really. With a renovation budget of £80,000 and two large buildings to combine into one family home, they certainly have a big challenge ahead. We've got a huge space to, to deal with. We're just toying with ideas design-wise, aren't we? I mean, we're in no rush. The house is livable. Um, and then this space, which is obviously just redundant, but you know we could we could renovate this bit at the same time and it not affect our family life. With the chapel being one of the first things you see as you enter the village, local neighbours are pleased Mike and Angela have plans to spruce it up. It's nice to have new neighbours. It's nice to have it renovated. It will give it a good entrance into the village. As you come in from town, it could be good. Mike and Angela have already moved into the Victorian house and they're raring to go to join it up with the chapel. Hopefully I can help them with the next stage of the process. Good morning, I'm Joe. Good morning. Angela, how are you doing? Good morning, Jack. Good morning. Right, good to see you. Good morning. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations. I understand it's just a couple of weeks ago you got this place? Yeah, two weeks ago. Amazing. How yeah. are you feeling? A bit nervous. <laughs> a bit nervous. <laughs> um, tell me about it then. It's quite an unusual building. What is it? Yep. It's a Baptist chapel. Right. And um, then the uh, church house, which is next to it. And it's a fairly, fairly decent sized space. It is a good size. For what we got for our money, we were just, it was a no brainer, really. Really? Yeah. Why not? Well, let's go and have a look yeah. what you did get for your money, shall we? Should we start in the chapel as we're right here? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Great. Goodness me, this is a tremendous space. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely huge, isn't it? It is, it is big. It's got a lot of ceiling height, which is good. Yeah, so, it certainly has yeah. got that. Yeah. What did you think when you first saw this? just thought, wow, what a big space, you know. Just imagined our kids running around in it and 
You know, it's everything you, we dreamed of already. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of room. What are you dealing with here? I mean, I can see some of the windows are broken. I mean, just what state is it in? How bad is it? It's dry. It, it is dry. dry. No, it is yeah. dry. The construction of it is, is quite good, actually. Um, you know, they've not, they've not scrimped on things when they've built it. So tell me the ground plan. How would you like it to be? Um, hopefully we'll be stood in the kitchen where we are now and then lounge, dining space, living space over the other side. Um, it, you know, full height. It's got, you know, a lot of potential, really, for yeah. the first floor, so... We'll have some sort of mezzanine, but we're not sure how we'll go about it yet. We could just have it all open, yeah. but we'd be losing floor space. It would join to the house, so you could continue yeah, a first floor exactly, across. Yeah. And what about the features of, of the chapel? I mean, you've got these great big windows. I noticed you're doing some mm. digging here. Mm. What's going on? Yeah, mm. uh, this is the baptismal font that I heard was here. So um, set about with a pick and a hammer and, and started breaking it out at the weekend, wasn't it? Mm. And uh, yeah, found the steps going down into it and the um, water in that and the original uh, floor level with quarry tiles, which, you know, are nothing out of the ordinary, you know, but it's just great to find an original feature. And it's, it's incredible. You know, it's really good. Nice what a find. under that rubble. Yeah. yeah so. And so you would try and incorporate a feature yeah. like this. Do, yeah. Mike and Angela are clearly taking on many challenges here, turning two buildings into one home, modernising the 19th century chapel and deciding whether a mezzanine floor maximises the space. On top of this, I have a feeling Angela is finding it hard to visualise the end result. Very good. I mean, this is great, isn't it? This is a fully kitted out, furnished house. It must be very comfortable. This is ideal, exactly what you're looking for, bolted onto the chapel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. It's a bit old fashioned, not really to our taste at the moment. And it's a question of taste, but yeah. it's in pretty good condition, isn't it? You can oh, live yeah, with it for fine. now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah absolutely definitely. Absolutely fine, yeah. And upstairs it's two, three bedrooms? Uh, four it's bedrooms. Four? four. Yeah. yeah it's quite four double bedrooms. It's, and, yeah. so it's going to be a big property when it's all done yeah. with the chapel on the oh, side. Yeah, it's yeah. quite big. Who is going to do the work on this project? Are you going to bring in professionals? It depends on money, wouldn't it, really? If we could. Sort of just project manage it, then then that'd be ideal. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we'll get our sleeves rolled up and we'll get on it. You know. When Mike and Angela show me the garden, it's clear why they've fallen in love with the building and the outdoor space it gives the children. It's a great space, isn't it? A really good size for your kids yeah, to so run around and play in. It's about right for us, I think. Yeah. I have to say, I, I find the stage you're at now so exciting because it's all possible isn't it it's all up for grabs yeah. you've just got to make your minds up and decide how you want it exactly. and so you're open to inspiration and because of that i think it's gonna be really good for you to see a property which i'll say at the beginning isn't a chapel doesn't have a religious connection but it does have some features i think you'll find really interesting okay and besides that you'll meet a couple who've been through a renovation like this they've mm. faced so many of the challenges that you're going to face here yeah. so i think it'd be a great opportunity to get some advice to get some guidance alongside bit of inspiration as yeah. well so brilliant that sounds good sounds very good yeah this is such a brilliant project this building that sat empty for so many years is about to be given a new lease of life it's the first thing you see as you come into the village and it's gonna be perfect to have people living here and for mike and angela this is the most exciting moment really because they're not quite sure how it's all going to work so it is the perfect time for them to see a property that has been renovated and they can speak to the people behind it to get some advice to get some guidance to help them on their way. Restoring an abandoned chapel may not be everyone's idea of heaven, but for those with imagination and dedication, the rewards can be enormous. In Winchester, Alice and Peter Dudgeon were living in a building that was originally part of a larger manor house that had been split in two in the 1950s. When their neighbor in the adjoining house died, it led the Dudgeons on an unexpected journey. We'd been living in the uh, major part of the house for about seven years at that point, and we weren't actually looking uh, to move. It was uh, just because uh, Nancy died and the house was going to go on the market, and we were a bit concerned about what would happen to it. And I guess also we, we did have an eye to downsizing a bit, but it's yes. obviously being somewhat smaller than the very large bit next door. Are you saying we were getting old? Yes. <laughs> The house had sat empty for seven months before they decided to downsize and buy it for £700,000. It had formerly been the servants' quarters for the Earl of Airlie and was built in 1856. 
It was very, very run down. The fabric of the, the building was deteriorating greatly. The roof, need, the roof was leaking, the guttering and the downpipes were all very much leaking, rusty. This is the first time that we'd actually used an architect in doing a renovation and it, it certainly was a revelation. It came up with a lot of ideas that we wouldn't have done. And uh, as Alison was saying, certainly incorporating the, um, the old cellar by uh, using the light well to be able to create a, a living space down there and of course my wine cellar was really a very good idea. After months of negotiations with architects and planning authorities, they finally got to work on a modern glass extension to the rear and that was when the fun really started. The, uh, the big challenge was the, the glass structure. They came to, with their big crane, they came to install the ceiling panels. And they said, uh, <clears throat> there's a bit of a problem, they've cut the ceiling panels six inches too short. Uh, and there they were, they'd been busily installing these things and there was a six inch gap at the top all the way along. Next minute I had a very large crash. And one of the, um, the, the, the central beam, glass beam, collapsed. Very lucky it didn't kill anybody, I suspect. Instead of having a complete glass structure at the end of it, we ended up with most of the ceiling panels in place, all six inches too short, and a gaping gap in the middle of where two panels uh, weren't, uh, were no longer there. And then it rained that night. Yes, and we had a swimming pool. And we had a swimming pool. That was very, very upsetting. And it did delay the whole project by a good three or four months. Alice and Peter went on to spend £400,000 and three years on the project, which has exceeded all expectations and given them a truly unique place to live. I think we're here for a while, hopefully. Having done what we've done, I'm quite to see us moving anywhere. Uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think we're here for a while, aren't we? No, no, I think another four or five renovations, we <laughs> might just about get it right. <laughs> And we think the building's fantastic. It's a fantastic surprise. You, you arrive in front of a, a traditional Victorian facade, you open the door and you open up this beautiful big high white glass interior flowing through to the garden, the glass staircase and the cathedral ceiling and all the light there. It's a great feeling when you walk through the door. Restoring Britain's forgotten buildings and turning them into housing stock is undoubtedly rewarding and importantly can also revive our communities. Across the south of England, three in every 100 homes lie empty and unused. Here in Chichester, over 20,000 families are currently on the housing waiting list. I've come to see a substantial new development that's aiming to create an entire community and rescue some historic buildings. This former hospital site in Chichester sits on 34 hectares of conservation land and includes two Grade II listed buildings. Construction first began here in 1894, with the hospital finally closing its doors in 2001. Three years ago, Linden Homes, along with the Homes and Communities Agency and Affinity Sutton, agreed to rejuvenate the site, creating new homes and upgrading buildings to meet modern standards. Peter Yule is part of the project. I can see looking around a mixture of new build and old. That's the point here, is it to reuse some of the old buildings but also put new homes alongside them? Yeah, nat naturally there's uh, an amount of buildings on the site that are listed and therefore obviously protected. Uh, and then there's obviously the, the heart of the site that we're standing on the fringe of, that, uh, that really obviously um, it would have been a, a, a real shame and travesty to, to take those down. The project will not only create much needed housing stock, it will also hopefully provide facilities for a whole new community. We've got ultimately uh, buildings that are going to be for community uses. So there's a community hall, um, there's uh, the uh, listed uh, chapel, which is going to be is already in use. We've got some artist studios, which uh, Graylingwell and Chichester particularly from the local university uh, wanted us to produce some artist studios for them to, uh, to kick off their, their budding careers. Uh, we've then got some offices, we've got a, a pub uh, planned. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of different uses here. And the homes themselves, a mixture of different bedrooms, different sizes. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, there's there's refurbishment properties here. We've got obviously a lot of new build houses, new build apartments, um, and 40% uh, of the site is, is is dedicated to affordable homes. Um, so uh, yeah, there's uh, there's there's a lot here. Fantastic. And this development is particularly notable for its attempt to provide the best energy efficiency across all of the buildings here. Tell me about this water tower. It's a very splendid red brick building. Um, great to see that still standing. What's it being used for? 
In essence, it, it provides a, a great uh, fluing option for our energy centre. We've produced a, an energy centre here that will drive all 800 homes on this development. They get one um, feed for their hot water and central heating needs. So all these homes, none of them have boilers. They all get their hot water this way. That's right. Instead of hundreds of different boiler flames going all the time, you've just got one that's, centre. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Impressive. OK, well, should we go and have a look inside there? That'll be great. Inside the hospital itself, work is about to start, but renovating such an old building comes with its own set of unique challenges. Although the structure's here, it does actually cost us more to develop, um, uh, redevelop and convert uh, old stock like this. Not only because it, it's not standard, there's, there's, there's just risks inherently within these buildings that, uh, that you can't see from the outside. Damp, um, treatments to the re-roofing um, and, and all sorts of structural issues we've got to deal with. Um, not that they weren't built very well, but we've obviously got to introduce new structures to, to divide them up into homes. Yeah, I mean, these are big high ceiling, you know, long rooms, I mean, a typical kind of hospital wards, aren't they? Yeah. How do you divide them up? Do you make apartments out of them? Do you sort of cut across them and make houses? How we, does it work? we do a mix of both. So uh, we use, obviously, architects, and they, they work out whether it's better to uh, vertically split the uh, accommodation or horizontally split. Vertically will obviously naturally produce houses, and then there's the, uh, the, the horizontal splits where it'll be more apartment-led. So this is very much the before state. <laughs> are there some that have been completed and are ready to show? Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've converted um, um, several, several blocks already. Great. Let's take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, look at this. It's a bit different from the old hospital ward we saw. Yeah, so here we go. A fully uh, converted apartment. This is a two-bedroom apartment, so, uh, yeah, pretty typical of what you'll, you'll get in the, in the refurbished buildings. I see. So, if, how, talk me through this flat, then. It'll be four rooms with it, so you've got open plan, sort of kitchen, diner, sitting room. That's right. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms, bathroom. bathroom and an ensuite in the main, in the main bedroom. So, oh, OK. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the high ceilings, new, new doors and windows, all, all fully, uh, um, fully re sort of restored. Very good. Well, best of luck with it, and pleased to see these old buildings actually being used. I think this is a really interesting project that's obviously going to come to fruition over many years ahead. Essentially, what they're doing is taking these old, dilapidated buildings and sculpting, together with new build, a working, functioning community. And I really like the communal focus here, the emphasis on one shared source of power, which is very efficient, it's going to make all these homes as environmentally friendly as possible. So hopefully, at the end of it, we'll not just have really well-preserved red brick heritage, but also new homes and affordable housing where they're really needed. Sadly, not all of Britain's forgotten buildings are found and regenerated. But luckily, local council empty property offices are taking action on behalf of communities. In Folkestone, Kent, Ian Cobby is on his way to a building he knows well. A former hotel, then bedsit, the 15-room property was bought four years ago, but the owners ran into financial difficulty and the council got involved. This is the final stage in a long process for Ian and he's hoping the building is close to being signed off. Renovating this property hasn't been easy. It's taken the owners at least three years to get this far with two loans, one from Kent County Council, one from Shetway District Council. So I'd be happy once it's completed. Ian is meeting John Emerson, who's project managing the renovation on behalf of the owner. Ian has to make sure the loan has been used properly and the project meets the council's high standards. You'll notice the heat straight away. Yes. I mean, as you know, the services aren't on yet but we've got double glazing, which we had to fight for through the conservation guy, because they just wanted us to put timber in. And every external wall has been um, dot and dab, stuck yes. with yes. plasterboard and 75 mil Celotex. Wow. That's... And that's where you can feel this tremendous heat. It's really, really warm. So if I could just show you the windows here. Yes, yeah, certainly, John. Do you remember when we originally started here, the conservation officer just wanted us to literally put new timber ones in or repair what we had, which yes. is impossible because yes. when we opened this up, it was so rotten, it was untrue. Mm -hmm. So we got a company to make them up, but make them up an exact identical design looking from the outside. Whoever buys these is just going to reap the benefits of it because Brilliant. the heat retention is amazing. Yes. It seems every effort has been made to restore the original elements of the hotel. 
This is one of the bedrooms. This actually was the main staircase of the hotel. And you can see the two big arch windows here. Yes, yes. That's, That's an original feature, isn't it? It is, yeah, and we couldn't change that. Yes. But this is where we first started to expose literally all the damage in yes. the building, which was yes. um, the, the rot in this building was, you know, from every single floor to every single lintel in this, yeah. this property has been changed. I can imagine. Yeah. So there was a roughly about a £75,000 bill on top, and that's why the owner went back to get a second loan. Yes. Um, and that's why it's literally taken three years to, to, you know, get it to this stage. For Ian, this lengthy project is hopefully close to providing much needed housing in the area, as well as reviving this large building. I feel that uh, the internal works that I've seen so far are exemplary at a standard higher than I'd expect. My next visit would be when John calls me to come back and have a look at it. Hopefully then the services will be in, all the snagging will be finished and I'll be able to sign the job off. If you've noticed abandoned buildings in your area and fancy the challenge of taking one on, then get in touch with your local empty property officer or contact estate agents or neighbourhood watch groups about derelict buildings you've seen. Back in Lincoln, I'm with Mike and Angela, who've taken on an abandoned chapel and the attached house that they plan to combine and turn into a sizeable family home. They're just starting to put plans together, so I'm going to introduce them to a couple who've done a large conversion and can hopefully offer some useful advice. Right, guys, this is the place I want you to see. It's quite an unusual home in that this was originally a collection of different buildings. Uh, we're on the edge of a farm here. You're about to meet Dean and Louise. And this was a chicken shed, uh, it was stables, it was hayloft, and a sort of pig shed. <laughs> so uh, it has been fully converted into their family home. They finished it just over four years ago. It was never designed to be lived in, and that's the challenge you're going to come across with the chapel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got a few good ideas, and, and you'll see how they've done things. And I hope it could be quite useful for you at this idea stage yeah. of your project. Yeah. yeah. OK, should we go and say hello? Yes, Stay. Yes. Come on. Louise Carpenter's dream for her parents' outbuildings goes right back to childhood, when the residents of the barns were her treasured chickens. Years later, when she and husband Dean were planning a family, Louise hatched a plan to turn the barns into her home. Growing up here, I always knew I wanted to renovate this property because I just knew the building was a great space and would make a fantastic home. I was quite excited, to be honest. I'm not a big chicken fan, but <laughs> I know Louise was very eager to do it, and uh, it was a good challenge. If you take on a restoration project of any kind, I just think you've got to be passionate about whatever it is you're doing. It's got to be your dream that you want to see through to the end. Having bought the barns from Louise's parents, they immediately worked on the tricky plans for combining the buildings into one family home. To actually turn what was a chicken shed along with past used stables for horses and for pigs um, to turn that into a home you know you ha had to have a real good vision of what you wanted it to look like before we even started the process. Having never housed people before the barns were uninhabitable but with a renovation budget of £260,000 and some careful planning they turned the chicken sheds into a modern home. The biggest issues that we came across when doing this project was the planning application. We had such an issue with what we actually wanted and what we were allowed from the planning office. There were obviously lots of things that we had to go back and think about again and our first ideas um, didn't come to fruition. I love the fact that we now live in what was a shed that housed our chickens and I think the chickens are really pleased because they've got a brand new palace we built still hear for them. them. <laughs> we still hear them every morning. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. Hi, Hi, how are you? Come on in. Fine Thank you very much. I'm confident this barn renovation will give Mike and Angela some ideas and extra knowledge when it comes to tackling their chapel conversion. Very good. This is quite aggressive, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I I think there's a clue why we brought you here. Any ideas? Mezzanine. Yeah, yeah. mezzanine. Mezzanine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your first impressions coming in here? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we wanted to keep this room, which was the original barn. We wanted to keep the height right. in this room, and we also needed to get up there and into the bedrooms, mm -hmm. and it was the easiest way yeah. 
and the ceiling would have been very low in here if we'd yeah. have had it yeah, yeah. as um, you know a room on top yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay, and you've chosen to go with sort of glass. Is that deliberate? Um, it was because we struggled with light in this room. We um, liked the look of the wood as well. We just thought it worked really well. It was quite in keeping. Yeah. yeah if it was, I don't know, chrome banister or something, yeah. it wouldn't yeah. have the same no. feel. No. Yeah. It's contemporary, but it's traditional at the same I don't think time. I would have you know, thought of the glass either, and it no. does, does work really well. Yeah. Mm. When you do start from scratch, like you have here, and these guys are as well with the chapel, what decisions did you have to make about heating it? It's all underfloor heating really throughout. Much, it's absolutely great for us because obviously the heat rises when you've got big spaces to fill. They're yeah. not drafty at all because the whole of the floor is, is heated. Have you so, obviously built that chimney rest in? That's where we have it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's not original, no, obviously, no, yeah. and we needed um, a double skin of bricks, so that's why we opted for that. Is that? Would you like something similar? Are you thinking yeah, a wood well, burner or anything? Yeah, I love burner. Yeah. Um, yeah. How happy are you now with it? I mean, is it all sort of now it's done? Do you look at it and think, yeah, that's just right? Yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah, I love it. Always yeah. of an evening when I'm sat down, I always look round and can't believe we've done it really. Mm. Yeah. Great. Let's see some more, shall we? It's clear from the stunning layout downstairs that Louise and Dean took real care during the planning phase to utilise space and ceiling height. And the same thought and care went into the children's rooms upstairs as well. Yeah, lovely. So this is clearly your sort of very open plan kitchen diner. And you wanted obviously this perspective where you're looking out in your garden and, and getting that light in as well. Yeah. Definitely. We knew with the being so um, short of light in the living room area that to come in here we needed to have it pretty much all glass and that, yeah. that was what we were aiming for. Well guys, thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing to see your place and it's quite incredible what you can do with a chicken barn. <laughs> so congratulations and, uh, and thanks for your, for your advice as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, have you found it looking around here today? It's obviously not a chapel, but there actually are quite a few similarities. Yeah, well, I've certainly got a bit more inspiration than I had before. I don't know about you. Yeah, but yeah, I've really enjoyed yeah. it actually. It's nice to chat to people and get ideas, and yeah, it's been really good. Because I suspect, I mean, I feel like you're very much into structure, and you can see how this pieces together. Yeah. And maybe Angela, you were struggling a bit more, particularly with the finishing touches. It's so far away; it's difficult to visualise. Yeah. Has this helped with that? It's helped. I'll still. I still struggle to imagine it like that, <laughs> but you know that is the sort of finish I'm looking for. So I can certainly imagine it a bit more now, I think. Good. Well, there's a lot of looking into things to do. Yeah. You've got a busy few months ahead of you, yeah. but hopefully this helps. Hopefully it sort of unifies the vision a little bit or gives yeah. you a few ideas to, to try out, you know, yeah. on paper. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And uh, good luck with it. I think today's worked out really well. Clearly, Mike and Angela are hungry for ideas, and there's inspiration aplenty here. The style of the mezzanine, the use of space, the open plan living, there's lots to take away. And quite frankly, yes, they've got a lot of work ahead of them, but they have a truly spectacular property, and I've got a feeling they'll make a great job of it and have a very, very special family home before too long.